Hey, what's up everyone? This week we'll be interviewing Anton Weisender. He's a developer with his own YouTube channel called Raw Coding, where he teaches full stack development. So if you like interviews like this, go ahead and subscribe and let's get this one started. Hello, everybody who's watching. Uh, my name is Anton. Uh, I uh, run a YouTube channel called Raw Coding and uh, it's basically a programming educational channel uh, make a bunch of videos on mainly ASP.NET Core, uh, JavaScript, uh, uh, full stack development essentially. Like, so if you ever seen like those uh, funky job interviews that they ask you to know everything, uh, um, basically I try to teach that. So uh, how I found Linode. So uh, I was trying to find some uh, a cloud provider that was a little bit closer to the bare bones, the well, essentially what cloud is as at at the core, and uh, Linode. Uh, there are a couple of providers providers out there, but specifically, I found out about Linode because I think it was another YouTube channel that I was watching. I can't remember uh, the name of it yet, but basically, uh, like before every every one of their of his videos, he would uh, basically put out a little advert for Linode and like talk about it so like one day i just checked it out and i was like hmm, this is actually a pretty good uh, um you know just a little starter uh compared to like azure or uh, what, what's it called or aws or uh, google cloud so yeah so that's pretty much it and so is that why you're documenting building these things on your youtube channel rather than you doing it privately is like the idea that you want to keep learning as you go mm -hmm. So uh, why did I do it on YouTube as well? Uh, yeah. I, I thought, uh, well, first and foremost, well, there are two things that I do. I do programming and tricking is kind of like up, up uh, not to sit in front of the computer all the time because when you go do tricking, you destroy your body. So there is some maintenance that comes with it. So as part of the, as being a, a part of the tricking community, uh, when I talk to other people, uh, they're just like ideas come uh, to life and you discuss them. One of the previous things that I've built is a uh, tricking, um, I call it a tricking royal, but it's basically a tricking online tricking battle. So it's similar to uh, a tricking uh, library in a sense that people upload uh, videos, but they upload them to battle each other. But I'm not going to go into that. But uh, when I was building that, uh, I had to like incorporate a lot of different technologies because you're essentially going like from scratch to end. And uh, I mean, back then I didn't know anything. I had to rebuild the thing three times. But the reason I try, I try to build this, this is something that I actually wanted to build. I always think it's fun and challenging to build something from scratch. And actually like, you can always say, oh yeah, I can do that. I can, uh, I can be anything I want, but not until you actually go and do it, you will never actually know. So trying to avoid that illusion actually go and do it and uh, then did it on YouTube because I thought that building a project from start to finish is one of the best ways to learn. So, and I, I probably did a little bit in injustice because I kind of like um, lead people along. It's not as, uh, it's not as impactful as if the person that goes on this journey, kind of like embarks on this journey alone, because then nobody, uh, if you're like, let's say, I don't know, you, you, you think of some project, it's, it doesn't exist. That's why you're trying to build it. So you embark on this journey alone and uh, there is no one to ask how to build this thing that you just thought of. So you just gotta like think of these things and like you solve the problem, you essentially like create a kind of thing. So walk me through your newest project with Nuke, Linode, ASP.NET, and what you're up to on these recent videos that are actually pretty interesting, where you're taking your audience along for the ride of like building out all of this, this stuff. Mm -hmm. So uh, as I was uh, going through this uh, tricking library um, project, uh, a lot of people wanted to add a bunch of different technologies like Elasticsearch, Docker, and not that they necessarily fit, so uh, I left those uh, aside for from the project itself, and I only tried to uh, uh, like keep the necessity. So there are going to be more videos coming along that cover specific topics, and then maybe I'll show how to integrate them with this project as well. Because I feel like there, there's a 
if, if you have a video that's specific to the project, it's kind of hard to learn the technology as well because it's going to be like specific in the context of the project. But if you kind of like co cover the concept, like what is Docker, and then this is how you integrate it with a project example. So I'm going to try to do that instead of like saying just uh, this is how you do Docker in this project. But the project itself, Tricking Library, we did a we did Next um, JS for the front end, and uh, so it's a separate app. We then have a back end for with ASP.NET Core and uh, PostgreSQL for the database and Entity Framework Core for the ORM. So ORM is just Object Relational Mapper. So we just have a, a plain C Sharp object and we just map it. We're able to app map it to a table or a column and uh, basically map database tables to columns and uh, it's a way, way, easier, way easier to communicate. So throughout the project, we just essentially just build up what the app is because uh, database is just to persist the data. Everything else is just being able to see what a trick is. So how do you quantify a trick like name, description, uh, its relationships, and then basically essentially transferring the idea of a trick into data. So strings and objects, etc. So that took most of the episodes uh, and uh, most of the operations like v version management. So once you have a trick, somebody performs a change, you up the version. How does that relate to other objects? Uh, because once you have like, I, I mean, th this did get quite hairy during the series as well and took a, I don't want to get too much into how the versions work, but if you could imagine if you have uh, two relationship, uh, two objects that relate to each other and let's say one bumps up a version and the the previous relation has to be cancelled out uh, for historical reasons we keep it and then a new relationship is formed right and once you have more and more of these relationships because tricks have a many-to-many self-referencing relationship it quickly becomes hairy which relationships you have to transfer and not so that's the kind of problem that we were solving in there i don't i don't think uh, i particularly did a too well of a job of time constraints and uh, not too much planning went into it as well, but kind of like was doing it ad hoc. But those are pretty much the technologies that, that was kind of like one of the main problems. There was also video uploads with FFmpeg where we, when we upload a video, we downscale it. And obviously once you have all of that, it wouldn't be a full project until you actually have to go and host it somewhere, right? Um, and I think that's one of the important bits. And obviously in the style of uh, some of these new job interviews, you get to like know about cloud. You got to know about how to build your pipeline. So Nuxt.js, so that's a fr modern JavaScript framework. Check uh, JavaScript. I mean, check yeah. ASP.NET Core. I mean, that's a backend technology. Check database PostgreSQL. Uh, check uh, learn how to use some of the tools like WSL2 to host your uh, to get your Postgres. Then get with GitHub. I uh, didn't go too much into it, but I mean, I, I think uh, should make a tutorial on some of that at some point. GitHub, GitHub Actions, so build a pipeline, and we basically use GitHub Actions to put it all onto a Linode. We also, for the files, when we upload a file to the ASP.NET ASP Core backend, we use a FFmpeg to downscale it and then put it into a bucket, and then the URL is put onto the object. So. Uh, again, integration with just cloud technologies and uh, essentially having like the, the full shebang, you know. Uh, so as you're building these and as you're making these videos, what made you want to choose Linode over some of the other options? Yeah, uh, as I, I think as I said in the beginning, I, I think it was more by word of mouth. It was a YouTube channel that I used to watch. Uh, I, can't, I, I can't remember the exact name. Chris Hawks, maybe? Uh, uh, famous YouTuber, um, yeah, he he was making adverts about Linode. I, I finally decided to check it out. I was like, right, let, let's take a look. Let's see what this is. I took a look. It was nice. Uh, I think at the moment, uh, uh, back then, they used to give maybe five or twenty dollar credit. Uh, I took that. I played around with it. I thought, like, right, damn, this is really simple. I like it. Uh, this is very very good platform to teach with. I remember uh, 
what's it called? I remember trying uh, Hetzner and uh, it's another cloud provider. I went through the sign-in process and uh, I, 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 I inputted some wrong details and payments and I got stuck in, in the sign and I couldn't get through the console and whatever. And I was like, right, God damn it. Like, right, sack, sack this off. So yeah, uh, Linode was like the first like thrift, uh, I, I guess how you say it, like thrifty or more like... Uh, um, affordable maybe? Uh, affordable, yeah, yeah. A more affordable option that just had a pleasant experience. I just signed in uh, and it was good. And uh, one time I remember... I really saved, uh, Leno really saved me one time. I basically, what I had to happen is my SSD crashed. Uh, well, just broke, right? And what I would have on that SSD is I would have a, uh, the, all the, uh, my WSL, so uh, subversion for Linux on Windows. And that would have all my SSH keys. Uh, and um, I basically lost access to like my production applications and stuff like that. <laughs> So it was uh, it was really good. Uh, Linode has like a l- leash lish. I don't know how to pronounce it. Lish console or whatever. It's essentially yeah. a, a, like a bastion uh, host into your uh, best, uh, like essentially a, a back uh, back door, I guess you can say. So you log in through the browser and you open a console in there and uh, pops up. And I was able to get a new SSH key in there. So that that was a really refreshing uh, a moment. I think uh, bigger cloud providers for I in my day to day work I work with Google Cloud, and uh, they have a lot of infrastructure. Uh, it's I, I believe it, it is a really good cloud provider as well. Uh, however, again as you said, like the the amount of options is overwhelming, and uh, the the reason for that I I feel like. Uh, if you think about like your company infrastructure, all the different departments you have, uh, it's essentially trying, like if you think how we, when we write code, we try to abstract things. What, what you essentially have is Google trying to abstract enterprise. And let's, th- th- there are a lot of enterprisey um, companies. However, as uh, you know, as the world is heading into this, a lot of people are, trying to start their own businesses a lot of people are you know trying to uh, uh, gr- well start their own businesses grow their own companies they're not starting at the enterprisey stage and i feel like uh, linode is just a really really good uh, option for like right let's stand up a vm storage bucket right that's it two things there uh, i think i feel like uh, also when you have a very very big cloud provider there is a lot of a lot of documentation that comes with it and you gotta like look through all of it with Linode uh, you get blog posts that describe everything in a blog post you read it and off you pop yeah so are there any milestones that you've done in the past year or so that like really kind of like sticks out to you yeah so really surprising one I was I um Worked on the authentication series for ASP.NET Core, and uh, was one of the, the the really first video uh, explaining something really basic about authentication and how it works. Uh, just a lot of people seem to be very confused, and that was like one of my biggest videos that has like two hundred thousand views and. Uh, yeah, just being able to see those numbers is really encouraging. I think that's uh, really nice. Uh, a lot of people support it, like, uh, briefly, <laughs> in addition, they feel like making two videos a week wasn't enough. I was like, all right, I'm just going to uh, see if I can er- earn more money from this. So I was uh, offering tutoring through Patreon. I had uh, some very, I had not so good students. I had some very good students. Uh, I mean, that's just life. And uh, that was very encouraging, uh, like uh, just being able to sh- share share knowledge. Uh, yeah, just kind of as uh, like w- when I started, I thought like, you know, yeah, I mean, I can do this YouTube thing. And as you kind of like start and you get like, yeah, my first video is going to get like a thousand billion views. And you like you put out your first video and like, Two weeks pass and it's like two views and you're like, hmm, 
maybe the, maybe this is a little bit harder than I thought. So yeah, uh, finally, kind of like get, getting there. I, th I feel like a uh, hundred thousand is when I'm gonna be more or less satisfied and like stop counting numbers. But like I'm quarter of the way there, so uh, I feel like just being able to enjoy this journey itself is good. Pretty uh, pretty satisfying. I, I will be putting out more conceptual videos, so. Uh, I will be steering towards let's cover this, this technology. So, for example, if somebody wants to know what Elasticsearch is, we might cover it. And if somebody wants to know what Docker is, we will cover it. But for you, how to stick that into your project and basic basic questions like is this back best practice? You can still like I uh, have a Discord server, so people can join that there, ask questions. Uh, that's always welcome. So if you're wondering about what's right, what's wrong, I mean, you can always ask it there. Uh, YouTube comments you can ask it there as well. Um, other than that, yeah, just kind of try to keep putting out content. All right, cool. And uh, you know, thanks again to Anton. And once again, his YouTube channel is called Raw Coding. I'll put all the links in the video description below so you can check him out. And that's it. So you're our first interview. Awesome, man. Um, by the way, I'll put this down as one of the big milestones for this year. <laughs> oh, okay. Cool. All right. Bye.